Hello, sports fans. We are ready for NFL picks for week number 16 in the league where they play. For pay! Winner after 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 winner. Two and a half months of on fire picking. Two years of on fire picking. Last week, I said take Kansas City, winner, take Minnesota, winner, take Jacksonville, winner, take the Eagles in a teaser, winner, take Baltimore, winner, take New Orleans in a teaser, winner, take Atlanta in a teaser, winner, take, uh, take uh, Pittsburgh in a teaser, winner, Dallas was a push, I was on the fence with Seattle and the Rams, I took the Rams in a teaser, winner, I basically was undefeated last week. I didn't lose a game. Undefeated, perfect record. I used all those teams in combinations. Some of them I used twice. I was undefeated last week. I didn't lose a game. Yeah, I might have got a break. Dallas was a push. They probably should have lost the game. Seattle was on the fence. I went with the Rams in a teaser. New Orleans, I got the late touchdown. I got lucky there. But when all is said and done, winner after winner after winner, Week after week after week, year after year after year, including the playoffs, including the Super Bowl, and I do it for F-R-E-E. -E. Unlike other shows that'll give you two picks and make you pay for the rest of them, or other shows that'll go 4-12 and 12 last week, or 5-11 and 11 and get everything wrong, botch up teasers, take Cincinnati last week, take dead caucus teams, take all those underdogs that had no shot of winning that I said had checked out of the season. How in the world do you take some of these teams last week? The Bengals, are you not paying attention? How in the world do you keep taking the Browns? Week after week after week after week, year after year after year. So I was perfect last week for F R E E. Let's get to week number 16. I'm probably not going to do a show next week. We'll play it by uh, ear. Probably not going to be a lot of important games last week, just like last year. So this could be my last week of picking until the playoffs. We'll see. We'll play it by ear. But let's get to week 16. This will be a light money week for me. I've been on such a roll. A lot of big spreads this week. A lot of throwout games. So this week will be a light uh, betting week for me. Next week, I probably won't pick it all, and then I'll get ready for the playoffs. But let's get to it. Some important games here. Let's go to week 16. Uh, there's going to be Saturday games this week, Sunday games, and Monday games this week. No Thursday game. So let's go to the Saturday game. The Baltimore Ravens at home, minus 13.5 against the Indianapolis Colts. Baltimore up to 8-6. and six. They beat Cleveland. Baltimore is fighting, you know, for that last playoff spot. The last two playoff spots, I should say. Buffalo in the mix. Uh, Tennessee in the mix, Chargers still alive. So this is a very important game for the Ravens. Colts 3-11, lost to Denver on Thursday night. They've lost five in a row. They've fallen completely apart, the Colts. They were in a lot of close games early. Now they're just falling to pieces. No luck the whole year. I hope he gets back on the field uh, next year. You have to like Baltimore somehow, some way in this game. If you're going to bet the game, it's Baltimore, it's a throwout. I know the money line will be ridiculous, I mean, 13.5 is a boatload. Maybe move the line down to 7.5 and, and take them in a teaser. It has to be Baltimore some way. Teaser, money line, straight up. Can't take the Colts. Can't do it. Baltimore or nothing. That's pick number one. Pick number two. Let's go down to Carolina. With the Carolina Panthers, a minus 9.5 against the Tampa Bay Bucks. Bucks lost a tough game to Atlanta. Bucks have just had a miserable season. They were 9 and 7 last year. This year they've just been a disaster. Carolina having a nice bounce back season. 10 and 4, hung on and beat Green Bay. Carolina fighting with New Orleans, fighting with Atlanta for, you know, for the division, for playoff spots. Carolina has been really playing some good football on both sides of the ball. Again, like the first game, you have to like Carolina here in some combination. Either, you know, money line I'll probably look at it personally as a teaser. Move the line to three and a half. I feel comfortable that way. I know nine and a half is a lot. Got to look at Carolina or throw the game out. Can't take Tampa Bay. I know they were competitive last week, but they found a way to lose. They took all sorts of injuries to Tampa Bay. They had a million guys out. They have nothing to play for. I'll go Carolina somehow, some way. That's pick number two. Pick number three. 
Let's go to Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City. Again, this is going to be a common theme. The Kansas City Chiefs are 10 over the Miami Dolphins. Again, you, you have to like Kansas City here somehow, some way. Kansas City's 8-6, and six, beat the Chargers. They now won two in a row after struggling for about six weeks. They look like they're in great position to make the playoffs, great position to win the division. Miami, 6-8. and eight. They had a big win against New England two weeks ago. Then they fell flat on their face against Buffalo. So Miami looks like they're pretty much done. They have nothing to play for. You have to like Kansas City here. Move the line maybe to four. Maybe you feel more comfortable that way. You know Miami, you just can't trust them. You just can't trust Cutler. They're up and down all the time. They give you one good game, two bad ones. They play terrible against Buffalo after the good win against New England. I don't trust Miami. I don't trust Cutler. I'll take the Chiefs. Tens a lot, maybe move it to four. That would be pick number three. Pick number four, let's go to Philadelphia where the Philadelphia Eagles are minus nine against the Oakland Raiders. Philadelphia up to 12 and two. Beat the Giants. I thought uh, the backup foals played well. Eagle defense not playing well the last couple of weeks. It's one thing to give up a lot of points to the Rams, it's another thing to give up a lot of points to the Giants who are decimated with injuries. Philadelphia Eagles off, uh, defense better step it up. Oakland, 6-8, lost to Dallas, a microcosm of the season for Oakland. Carr is trying to reach the ball into the end zone, fumbles the ball, out of bounds, Raiders lose. I don't know what Carr's doing there. Go out of bounds, you're at the four-yard line, first down, 30 seconds to go, plenty of time. I don't know why he tried to do that. Microcosm of the Raiders' season, I'll tell you, ever since Carr got hurt last year, it has been just an awful, awful mess for the Oakland Raiders. We'll see how they bounce back next year, but the Raiders are lost cause this year. Again, like the other games, if you're going to bet this game, you got to like the Eagles here. The Raiders have nothing to play for. They're traveling across the country. Maybe move the line down to three. Philadelphia is playing for top seed. They're battling Minnesota. They have something to play for here. I don't know what you're going to get from Oakland. I really don't. So to me, it's Eagles or nothing. Again, I look to uh, play the game in a teaser because I'll move the line to three. I feel a lot better Eagles minus three than minus nine. I'll play the Eagles there. That's pick number four. Pick number five, let's go to one of these Monday games with the Pittsburgh Steelers, a minus 10 against the Texans. Texans 4-10, and 10, lost four in a row. They've been decimated by injuries. I'd like to see the Texans next year at full strength because I think when they're at full strength with Watson and Watt, I think they're going to be a really good team. They have to stay healthy, though. Let's get to the Pittsburgh Steelers. 11-3, lost to New England yet again. The Steelers are snake bit when it comes to New England. And they took a major punch in the gut. Of all the teams to lose that way to, it had to be to New England. I mean, Pittsburgh is snake bit when it comes to the Patriots. And listen, I don't want to dwell on the call. We know about the catch rule. Don't give the replay booth any reason to change the call. Don't give them any reason. If they see that ball moving, if they see that ball hitting the ground, if you know the rule, we saw it with Megatron, we saw it with Des Bryant, you can't give them any reason to overturn that. You just can't. You have to be sure. Hold on to the ball there. Go down at the half-yard line and make sure if you reach it over, you don't lose control of it. And I know if we're playing, you know, Football in the backyard, that's a touchdown. It looks like a catch. He goes to the ground. He reaches over. He fumbles it a little bit. But in the NFL, they're not going to give you that. They're just not going to do it. They already changed the rule where the ball can hit the ground as long as you have possession. But with stuff like that, as soon as I saw that ball wiggle, I said, oh, here we go. This is Megatron, Des Bryant all over again. And it didn't have to be that way. The tight end was wide open. I didn't even think he had to go to the ground. Nonetheless, he did stay down at the half-yard line. The Steelers are going to punch it in from there. Or make sure you have that ball and just reach it over. Take a firm grip. That was a terrible way to lose. And then it just didn't end there. Remember, that was only first down. On second down, the Steelers run this little pattern outside that goes nowhere. The, clock, the guy doesn't go out of bounds, so the clock's running. Now the Steelers are in complete panic mode. Third down, the clock's run. The clock's running. This is where the Steelers really messed up the game. To me, you should run your regular offense. And you can't run the ball, obviously. You, have, you know, you can't stop the clock. You've got to have more than one receiver out in a pattern. And you cannot throw the ball over the middle of the field with one receiver in the pattern with all those bodies there. Remember when Seattle did that against New England? How did that turn out? Just like this turned out. Roethlisberger 
does that ridiculous fake spike trick play like Dan Marino. And to me, okay, no problem. Throw it to the outside where a receiver can catch it or it goes out of bounds and then kick the field goal and we go from there. No, he throws it inside, gets deflected, pops up in the air, intercepted, game over. The Steelers don't even get a chance to kick the field goal. And I have no problem with them going for it on third down there. I heard a lot of people said, oh, he should have just spiked and kicked the field goal. No, you go for the win there, but you got to do it the right way. Throw it to the outside where only a receiver can get it or it goes out of bounds and have more people in the pattern. You have one guy across the middle and there's four Patriots around him and you're throwing it in the middle with all those bodies. All those big hands are up. You don't know where the ball can go. Remember what Seattle did? I mean, that was a terrible job by the Steelers at the worst possible time against the worst possible team. Now the Steelers are going to be the two seed most likely. That means they're going to have to play Jacksonville maybe and go up to New England and win. Jacksonville and New England have both beaten the Steelers. This was a terrible loss, and I don't want to hear about the refs. The refs don't make the rules. And remember, the replay booth, they got it right. The ball moved. What can you do? We've seen this rule before, and here's another thing. Don't blame the Patriots. What do the Patriots have to do with this? The Patriots always seem to find a way to win. Blame the Steelers or blame the competition committee for the rule. And the Steelers still had chances. And again, forget about that. How about the Steelers blowing a 24-16 lead? How about that? Five minutes to go, they're up 24-16, they blow the game. They blow the lead. I mean, again, the Steelers defense in a big spot against New England comes up small. And I know they don't have Shazier there. And we wish him well. It was good to see him up in the booth. He's going to have a long recovery process. We wish him well. And I know Hayden isn't back yet, and they miss him. The Steeler defense has to find a way. 24-19, to 19, they have a chance for an interception. They drop the ball. Then it's Gronkowski wide open over the middle. Gronkowski again wide open over the middle. Gronkowski makes a good catch inside the 10. New England stops it right in. And then on the two-point conversion, which was huge, Gronkowski is wide open again. How about someone cover Gronkowski? Or how about you double-team him and let someone else beat you? The Steeler defense came up small there. The Steeler offense at the end came up small. Blame the Steelers. You cannot blame New England. New England, what did they do? They found a way to win the game. The Steelers mucked up the game. I mean, how could you blame New England? They made another big defensive play at the end, just like they did in the Super Bowl. And how about last year when they're down 28-3 to to Atlanta? They find ways to win. You can't be upset with them. Oh, it was just a terrible punch in the gun. I'll tell you one, one thing before I pick this game. Another thing. The Steelers want to be the best team in the AFC. They want to be top dog. And I know Antonio Brown's out. He'll be back for the playoffs. If it comes down to it, beat Jacksonville at home and go to New England and win. It's all right there for you. The season's not over. Beat Jacksonville at home and go to New England and win. Beat the two teams that beat you. And if you lose to one of those teams for the second time this year... You don't deserve to go to the Super Bowl. It's that simple. It's right there for the Steelers. They still control their own destiny as far as they win out. They'll be in the Super Bowl. It's as simple as that. Go beat Jacksonville at home. Go beat New England in New England for once. Go find a way to beat them. You have to finish. That was an awful, deplorable way to end the game for the Steelers. And I'm not just talking about the call. All right, as far as this game... Listen, this is a big game for the Steelers because, remember, they're only a game ahead of Jacksonville for the two seed, and Jacksonville has the tiebreaker. So the Steelers need to win these last two games to secure a two seed and a bye that will give Brown extra time to rest. Uh, to rest. I'd also like to see the Steelers get Harrison on the field more. I mean, Harrison is you know dying to get on the field more. They won't play him. And I know he can't play every down. Get him on the field more, especially with Shazier out. Get Harrison on the field more. Spreads 10. I know the Steelers can be sloppy, especially on the road. Can't take the Texans. Move the line down to four. You've got to think the Steelers are going to take care of business here. I like Pittsburgh in a teaser. That's pick number five. Pick number six. Let's go to the Big D in Dallas with the Dallas Cowboys. I'm minus four and a half against the Seattle Seahawks. Dallas stays alive. They are up to eight and six. They hung on and beat the Raiders. Got very lucky in that game. Elliott uh, will be back this week. Dallas still has a chance for the playoffs. they got to win the next two games, and they need help, So that, but they're still alive. Seattle, they're also still alive, but they need a lot of help. Seattle down 8-6. How about the performance at home by the Seahawks over the weekend? They got embarrassed by the Rams at home. The Seahawks, who have that great crowd and that great home field advantage, 
were embarrassed, lifeless, pushed around in their own building. And I know they got a couple injuries on defense. That was embarrassing to watch. Russell Wilson throwing the ball backwards. They're doing nothing on offense. They're getting carved up on defense. Embarrassing in front of you all home fans. Remember Seattle when they won the Super Bowl? We thought they were going to win a bunch of Super Bowls. They end up messing up the game against New England the year after. They have not been the same team since. Listen, they're a good team. I respect them. They're not the same powerhouse they used to be. That was embarrassing over the weekend. And I was on the fence on that game. I was saying, ah, should I take the Rams in a teaser? I could have been talking to Seattle straight up. I took the Rams in a teaser, and I was oh so lucky. As far as this game, i got to like Dallas. I have to like them maybe in a money line, maybe in a teaser. I mean, I, you can't take Seattle off what you saw last week. Now they're going on the roads. Dallas gets Elliott back. i got to like Dallas here. I mean, it's not a big money game for me, but I'll take Dallas. And by the way, they asked Garrett uh, about uh, Elliott coming back, and he goes, yeah, I'm not sure how I'm going to use Elliott this week. You're not sure how you're going to use Elliott this week. Well, you, you, you're going to give him the ball a lot, aren't you? He's one of the best running backs in football. you got that big offensive line. What do you mean? you going to sit him on the bench? You're going to play him only two plays? You, you're going to use him and use him a lot, I would think, right? Come on. I'll take Dallas there. That's pick number six. Pick number seven. Let's go up to New England with the New England Patriots. All minus 11 and a half against the Buffalo Bills. New England, like I just talked about, 11 and three. Top seed if they went out. Buffalo, eight and six. Beat Miami. Buffalo right there in the playoff hunt as well. This is a very big game. Then you got this whole Gronkowski thing. Remember the Gronkowski incident. So now you know, don't know what's going to happen with these two teams going after each other. I mean, to me, the safe play with home field on the line for New England is to take New England minus five and a half. New England handled Buffalo a few weeks ago, 23-3. But with all this stuff going around, all these extracurriculars with Gronkowski, to me, I might just throw this game out completely. I don't know what you're going to get in this game. I don't know if you're going to get a lot of fisticuffs in this game, a lot of bad play. I hope it's a clean, good game. It's a very important game for both teams. We don't need to see any dirty football. We know Gronkowski was out of line. He got suspended. We don't need to see, you know, another dirty play here. So to me, the safe play for most people is move New England to five and a half, taking them in a teaser. I might throw the game out completely because I'm just not sure what you're going to get here. Like I said, New England did beat Buffalo up in Buffalo 23-3 to a couple weeks ago. It's a huge game for both teams. New England playing for top seed and Buffalo playing for their playoff lives. As far as pick number eight, this is another light money game for me. It's a very important game. The New Orleans Saints at home, minus five and a half against the Atlanta Falcons. The Saints, who that? Ten and four, beat the Jets. Like I said, they're right in the uh, thick of things for the division with Carolina. That's a great division, by the way. Saints, Carolina, Falcons all could make the uh, playoffs. Atlanta, nine and five, beat Tampa Bay. Did not look good doing it. I was not impressed with Atlanta in that game. They got to up their play a lot to win this game. These two teams played on a Thursday night two weeks ago, and Atlanta won. I think this is a very close game. Field goal game either way. I would lean New Orleans money line here. I would lean New Orleans in a field goal. But again, not a big money game for me. I mean, it's a very important game. If I had to pick it, I lean towards New Orleans. But it is a fabulous game, a must-watch game. And then there's a lot of throwout games. Arizona Giants, on general principle, is a throwout Minnesota Green Bay, I think Rodgers has been ruled out. I think the spread went up to 9.5 to me. If you take anybody, you got to take Minnesota in a teaser there, 3.5 with Rodgers out. But again, I'm probably not going to pick that game. Minnesota, of course, battling for that top seed in the NFC. Uh, Jacksonville-San Francisco is a funny game. San Francisco is playing better with Garofalo. I mean, you know what? Jacksonville's playing well. That could be a defensive game. I, I don't have a feeling on that game. Jacksonville going all the way across the country. Rams-Tennessee is a huge game, but again, no feeling. Rams seven-point favorite on the road in Tennessee. Rams look so good on offense. Tennessee fighting for their playoff lives. They have to come up with a big performance now. Tennessee has been so unimpressive, but they're right there for a playoff spot. I mean, Mariota hasn't had a great year by his own admission. Again, no feel for the game. I, mean, I like, the Ram, like the way the Rams are playing, but you're giving seven on the road to a team that really needs it. Tennessee hasn't looked great. No feel there. Washington, Denver is a throwout right off the bat. Chicago, Cleveland's a throwout. Chargers, Jets. I know the Chargers are still alive, but again, no feeling. Could be bad weather here in New York. Detroit at Cincinnati. I mean, Detroit's a huge game for them. They're fighting for their playoff lives, but I never trust Detroit. They're a strange team, and Cincinnati to me has checked out, so if you're going to take anyone, you got to take Detroit there. But again, a lot of throwout games for me, a lot of strange games. It's a holiday weekend. Second to last week of the year, a lot of big spreads. To me, it'll be a light 
money week. Like I said, those beginning picks that I gave you, I would probably use those in teasers and combinations. But to me, a light money uh, betting week. And next week, I probably won't bet at all. There's probably not going to be many big games at all, maybe a handful. Probably won't do a show next week, but I'll be back with you guys in two weeks in the new year, you know, for the playoffs. Of course, you got your college football Final Four coming up. By the way, what's with all the bowl games? There's like 100 bowl games and like 90 of them are bad. I know the Final Four is good, a couple of bigger bowl games, but some of these bowl games are just terrible matchups. So there you go. You guys are all caught up. You guys are all set. I will probably be back with you guys in two weeks for the playoffs. Don't think I'm going to be back next week. We'll play it by year, though. If, if, it's, if there's a lot of games that mean something, I'll do a show. If not, I'll see you in two weeks in the new year for the playoffs. You guys, thanks as always for the support. Stay happy, healthy, and safe. Pick a lot of winners. Make a lot of money. I'll talk to you probably in the new year. Happy New Year. Happy Holidays. Take care.